All right, it is 5.15, and I will call the first meeting of the Finance and Personnel Committee of the 24-25 session to order. Uh, we'll begin with the roll. Alder LaFay? Here. Alder Decker? Here. Alder Barella? Here. Alder Felby? Alder Felby is excused. Mitchell is present. We have a quorum. Will you all please join me in the pledge? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first committee meeting of the session. We will not jump over item number four, but we'll instead go into the introduction of committee members and staff. Guess I will start. Uh, Trey Mitchell, Alderman District 9, Chairman of the Committee. Grazie Pirella, District 7, Vice Chair. Kelly, do you want to start us off? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> With that, we'll move on to item number five, which is approval of the minutes from the April 8th, 2024 meeting. Is there any discussion on the minutes? If not, we would be looking for a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. <laughs> Takes us into item number six, which is RO number seven of 2425, submitting for information a copy of the City of Sheboygan Affordable Housing Policy. Good evening. Um, we have before you a draft of the uh, proposed affordable housing policy. This is when we have the TIG closure. Um, that extra year that we keep it open, that those funds went into the affordable housing fund. And part of this is to require a policy on how the funds are to be used. So the, before you is the draft. Um, essentially, the projects that are funded with this would be capped at the rental rates um, based on affordability and the calculation is below. So um, sample calculation is looking at the average <clears throat> monthly rental rate of a two bedroom apartment. Um, hypothetically is 1,680 with a <clears throat> HUD home, two bedroom home, low rent limit in 2023 would be 867. So the adjusted for the 100% would be looking at um, basically doubling that number to $1,734. So that's how we would calculate and that's based on 30% of a household's growth mo gross monthly income based on the state definition of affordability. Alder Perla? Yes, would you please ex explain? Um, there, are, there are two things actually that I would like to understand of this. Um, the median of the house rent uh, that HUD provide is a national, a national median or it's a Wisconsin median? Uh, it's a Sheboygan County, I believe, specific. So it's a countywide rate, but that is, HUD is, they produce it nationwide. Right, so, but the median that we use in order to make this verification is the Sheboygan County. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that generally lags about a year, two, three. <laughs> so the HUD numbers are actually further behind than actual income numbers. So even though wages are growing faster than um, rates, HUD only <laughs> HUD is about two to three years behind. So the rates, these rates will actually be lower than what affordability really is. Yeah, no, I just want to make sure that we, we are using local median, yes. not the national we, media, median. Yep. Then the other thing is that why do we uh, do times two? <laughs> I'll defer to Diane for that one. So the low rent rate is for people that are making 50% of the county median income. 
And so affordable is making it affordable to 100% of the citizens of the city. So it's multiplied by two. So 50% would be what? Mm -hmm. The people that make 50% of the um, LMI, or, um, AMI would be able to pay. So 100% is times two. So basically it's a formula that you use anyway automatically times two. Yeah, so if you were doing a HUD project where they said you had to make rent affordable to people at 50% of the, of the county median income, then it would be that 867. But since we are, our affordable definition is up to 100%, as long as you're not paying more than 30% of your income. Okay, thank you. So uh, just one reminder, these would be the rate would be locked on these. It's not necessarily verifying income to get into these properties. So it's not like a section eight where there's gonna be verification of income of the people that are living there. Uh, this will actually be us annually verifying that these rent rates are being met. So different program than the federal program, but we're trying to model it after, um, after the federal program to ensure that we're um, getting the affordable housing with the funds that we're using um, to adequately meet that need. Basically, you verify with the developer or management that they are in compliance. In Correct. Compliance. Okay. So, and that, that doesn't mean that those folks, you know, you can have folks that are way above that renting these, um, these particular units because we're not doing uh, income verification on the tenants where under a federal program, they have to serve the pie monthly usually, or annually that, so these, this program's a little different, um, but it's targeted to make sure that we're getting um, products into the community that are rent restricted and basically um, able to meet the affordability rate for Sheboygan County and ultimately the city of Sheboygan. So just one more follow up, Jamie. Basically, we make sure that they don't rent at a higher rate. However, we don't, we don't verify, we don't have the need to verify whether they do rent to people who could afford higher rent houses. Correct. Okay. We don't, we don't have the staffing to do something right, like that right. because that's very, yeah. very tedious task. But um, so just as a part of the development agreements that would come forward, any project that would have this related to it, there'd be a stipulation of reporting and complying with, with these requirements here. Makes sense, thank you so much. Yes. Elder Decker. Um, so in other words, um, with, with these, um, the developers themselves though can have a, put a, uh, a requirement on those, correct? As yes, far as the developer income, can do whatever they, can do they an, want. They can do an income re requirement to meet that. That, that, that yep. threshold, okay. Absolutely, yeah, the developer could. Um, you know, in this, in this case, you know, they can, uh, they could say, you know, this is the income level, so, but for as far as the city's concerned, the utilization of the fund, we need to ensure that these rental rates are going in so it's affordable as defined by the state statute. Um, this meets that requirement so that we're ensuring that the projects that are funded with this funding would then meet that requirement, so. Yes, they could absolutely do that if they so desired. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Just one from my end. In the event that in that annual review it's found that the property is not in compliance, the policy mentions that there will be work done to rectify the situation. What would that look like? Um, so it'd be a couple different things. Um, we would look at, um, you know, obviously notifying them and asking them to adjust it if we couldn't get compliance. Like I said, ultimately this is a subsidy that would be provided by the city to the developer. At that point, we'd look at um, either a default under the development agreement, which we would have recourse in the development agreement. So we would reference this policy and then the de development agreement is kind of the driving agreement um, by which they're getting funding. So we would have recourse under that policy or that agreement uh, to go back, whether it be legal action or terminating the rest of the contract, um, going after for 
uh, a portion of the funding that was provided on the project. So we have a number of different avenues, but ultimately the development agreement would spell that out. Thank you. Yes. Last call for any discussion? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve on this one. I move to approve. So, all right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Thank you. It takes us to item seven, which is IRO number eight of 2425, submitting for information a copy of the memo dated April 11th, 2024, uh, sent to all non-represented employees regarding updates to the City of Sheboygan's employee handbook, along with a copy of the employee handbook revised April 2024. Would anybody like to speak to this one? Good evening. So we implemented the new handbook um, January 1st, 2024. And as always, when you try something new, you can get all the kinks worked out. So um, a lot of the items that are listed here, I can go over them each individually if you wish. Um, were areas that left a lot of questions, um, needed some more answers, more information, kind of work out the bugs, make sure employees have a good understanding of them, work out processes with the department heads and managers and working with finance. So as an example, the first one, separation of employment, there was language in the book that if an employee gave notification and it was six months or more that they'd get some kind of monetary payout. And there was nothing in the budget to fund that. So obviously, I don't even know what that payout would look like. There was no language in it, so we simply removed it. Um, something that anybody wants to explore could add back in, but um, there was no funding for it. So we took that out. The overtime language was updated based on um, information that was very confusing and not quite had been discussed in detail with the Department of Public Works. So Caitlin and I met with managers, met with Casey, went over this probably two or three times and then made sure that the language represented what we actually do. The holidays um, just Clarification was added. Military policy, it was very vague and in some of the negotiations with the PD, they wanted us to, um, they wanted to mirror our military leave policy. So we adopted a very healthy military policy. It's very thorough in detail, covers all aspects of the service that's available and put that language in here so that they will mirror that in their contracts. Jury duty was, again, a, just cleaning up more for a processes perspective than it was language. And the last one, insurance, was, again, making sure that it was clear if you have short-term or long-term disability that you'll only collect up to 100% of your gross income and not 140 or 50. So you never want to return to work because it's more fun to be off and make more money. <laughs> so... Any questions? What is the board, the um, library board? The addendum. library board addendum. So I w have been working with Garrett and attended the library board um, meeting. And they wanted to mirror our policies and procedures versus having their own set. And they asked that they simply have that language in this contract or in this handbook so that they don't lose all their ability if they do want to make any changes. So I thought that was a simple addendum to make. So the employ the employ employer handbook applies to the board to the library, and by adding this language here, we make sure that that is clear and obvious. Correct. It, so they will comply with all of this. Right. They have to comply with this, and they will not have their own. No, they okay. don't have their own. They got rid of it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? If not, we would be looking for a motion to approve. 
I make a motion to approve. Second. Second guessing myself on approve or file, but there's a copy of the revised handbook, so we're going to stick with approve. All right, we have a motion okay. and a second, then seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Takes us to item number eight, which is RO number 138 of 2324, submitting a petition, notice and list of tax liens of Sheboygan County being foreclosed in the matter of the foreclosure of tax liens under Wisconsin statute 75-521 by Sheboygan County. Good evening. This document is sent to us via Sheboygan County, so it is just for your record. Any questions or comments? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to file. I make a motion to file. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then, seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. That one is filed. Brings us to item number nine, RO number 139 of 2324, submitting an exit interview report for quarter one for the city of Sheboygan. Good evening. So in our new handbook, we had adopted the ability for people to have an exit interview. We created the exit interview and tried to put it in a very simple format so that you could understand it and kind of just summarize it without disclosing personal information because it is confidential. Um, represented do not have to comply with this. However, both chiefs have asked that we reach out to those represented employees when they leave to gather information as well so they can make good choices when they're working with employees. So it, um, hold on a second. Can I walk through it? Please. Okay, so the first part is just covering the first quarter and you can see there were 17 terminations and that is the number of exit interviews we conducted. In the exit interview findings, we summarized using the strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, or strongly disagree on the number of statements there. So that gives you the total of those that how, and how they answered and responded. In the negative experience, um, a lack of inclusion, so meaning they didn't feel like they were part of a team in their department, being put in the middle of petty issues, and receiving questions from contractors, community members about the number of issues that are going on at City Hall were what was listed. Positive experiences were receiving recognition from a job well done. Some of our departments do really good with this and some could use some enhancement in that area. Seeing supervisors stand up and advocate for their team. I think our department heads are very proud of their departments and do a good job with that. And then when asked to share their reason for leaving, company culture, family circumstances, retiring, type of work, one of the things that brought on me bringing the hours change, or Casey bringing the hours change forward was some of the feedback that we had gotten when people are leaving that they had a lot more flexibility where they were going. They were allowed four days at 10 hours so that you know they got longer weekends and that. So if we can become that employer of choice and have more flexibility with our workforce, we could you know, hopefully retain some of those. Any questions? Format okay? Other Perel? Yeah, first of all, I want to uh, thank, thank you, Director Handy, because for the transparency, for making it mandatory, and uh, most importantly, for sharing it with us. I think that's, that's a great tool we can look at because it gives us one more, um, one more way to, one more, it adds to the knowledge of how we are doing as an employer. I personally appreciate it very much. And I also thought that based at least on this first bunch of uh, exit interviews that we are doing pretty well. 
That's we not, are. Yeah, exactly. So I was very pleased to see that. I do not have any additional question. I do share this information with the department heads um, individually after we do some exit interviews so that they can get that feedback directly. Any other questions or comments on this one? I would just repeat most of what Alder yeah. Corrales said. This is great information that gives us more insight into how we are doing and what areas we should focus on for improvement. And yeah. I was positively surprised on how good the feedback was overall. That it's good to know that good. we're doing well in most areas. Yeah. As far as format goes, this was pretty easy to uh, go through, in my opinion. I'll <coughs> defer to the committee if anybody had any suggestions there. Oh, I, I'm very <laughs> impressed, with, I guess, with my comment. Very impressed? Yes. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. And then on this item, if there is no more discussion, we would be looking for a motion to file. I make a motion to file. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. That item is filed. That takes us to item number 10, which is resolution number 2 of 2425, a resolution authorizing city staff to file a claim in regard to uh, payment card interchange fee and merchant discount antitrust litigation. Yeah, so this is just here so that we can file a claim. Uh, the, we do keep track of ongoing litigation that's out there uh, where we might have the opportunity to file a claim. And this one came across our desk. And as we looked into it a little bit more, it became clear that there's at least a chance that, that we'll, we might receive some kind of a settlement. And it's a fairly simple claim to make. So we're just requesting your authority to make that claim in hopes that we can get a little money brought back into the city coffers for this. Any questions or comments on this one? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Takes us to item 11, which is resolution number four of 2425 a resolution authorizing an amendment to the 2024 budget for the transfer of remaining cash balances from the TID 6, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15 funds to the Affordable Housing Fund. Yes, so the affordable housing policy that um, Administrator Bradley touched on earlier uh, came forward because we were um, bringing forward this adjustment um, to the budget, but also for requests to transfer the funds. Uh, we went through a long and vigorous audit of all six of these TIDs, and we have the final balances that are now in them. And because we are have those closed, we are asking for the council's permission to go ahead and move those funds to the affordable housing fund. Any questions or comments on this one? Alder Pro? It's more a, a technical, I mean, more for my own curiosity, um, because I, I, I will approve this, but I was wondering, could we, if we decided to, are, we, are the uses of these balance funds um, restricted? Can we put them somewhere else? So these funds could be utilized for other things because we already did the affordable housing transfer. So these are the remaining funds in the TIDs. Um, that being said, the capital plan and how these funds were built out, um, it was actually anticipated that these funds would pay for part of the Gartman Farm mortgage. So it was already kind of built out knowing that these funds would be available to pay that. When, when was that decided? I mean, was it decided with the garment uh, um, agreement then? Yeah, I, I, back in, I, don't recall I, that. I believe that was in 2022. I think 2022 is when that was initially discussed. So we, at that time, we discussed if there would be balances of this TID. Not necessarily in that specificity, I would say, but the initial discussion was that affordable housing would pay for the 
the mortgage payments with the knowledge that these were closing. Um, that being said, there is a plan to reimburse the affordable housing fund when it's a able to be done um, to reimburse for this amount and the amount that's already been paid towards the Gartman farm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion on this item? If not, we would be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, chair votes aye, the ayes have it, the motion passes. Next up is item number 12, which is resolution number five of 2425, uh, resolution discontinuing collection efforts for historical warrant fees. Yes, this item is brought forward due to a change in the ordinance that occurred uh, last summer. Um, Common Council approved that we no longer charge a $25 fee associated with warrant pickups. Uh, the, that fee has been charged to individuals. However, the collection of that has been near non-existent. We received maybe a hundred, couple hundred dollars per year, but the amount of effort that was getting put into collecting them was near nothing. That being said, uh, the amount that's been sitting out here um, that we have not collected dates back 20 plus years. So I am now requesting that finance um, does not put any more effort into collecting those as they might even be um, past our collectability or uh, the statute of limitations, I guess is the proper term, um, for collections of that, but also the amount of work that it would go into putting together a database of all the information because it's all on paper, other than the list that you see, um, would be tedious and I think we would be spending more staff time than what we would actually get returned on. Um, additionally, these, docu these amounts have not been included in our financial statements historically, so there is no current budget impact um, for not collecting this other than the couple hundred dollars per year. Uh, questions or comments on this one? <clears throat> Then I will keep it short and sweet and say, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, if there's no discussion on this one, then we would be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Brings us to item 13, which is resolution number eight of 2425 a resolution authorizing entering into a tax incremental district development agreement with Van Horn Properties of Sheboygan, LLC, regarding the development improvements to be located on Wilgus Avenue in the city of Sheboygan. This also relates to RO 102425, which is item 17, which is the memo explaining it. So I don't know why they're split up, but uh, um, I can <laughs> go through that if you'd like, but Ultimately, um, we've been working with Van Horn. I know they've been in multiple times for the PUD process. Um, they're, they've started construction. Um, I kind of address why this is coming after the fact. Um, they had an issue with a private water line that was running across their property. Um, they, we held up on the development agreement because we wanted to make sure that they came to an amicable agreement with the surrounding landowner um, before we got too far into the process. So they were able to do that and they kept their um, <clears throat> construction process going, but um, with the understanding that we we're gonna move forward with the development agreement as discussed um, before you. So pretty straightforward, uh, straight, they're guaranteeing a $5 million development. Um, it'll be a straight pay go, so no costs on the city side. It will just reimburse to help defray some of their construction costs. Any questions or comments on this one? Alder Perella. So for the sake of uh, our residents and audience, remote audience, and for all of us, uh, can you summarize the plans? Summarize the plan. This is, you've uh, discussed this plan numerous times. Um, this is the new Kia dealership. So they'll be ultimately tearing down uh, the, the, it was what the Mazda dealership um, that is in the city now. They annexed the lot that was next to them that was in the um, town of Sheboygan and they're putting the new dealership on that. So right now that 
that lot did serve as the parking lot for the uh, Mazda dealership. Now the Mazda dealership will serve as the um, parking lot for the new Kila dealership that is covered in this agreement. Would you be so kind to explain why this would have a um, impact on the housing, or what is the indirect? Up, um, I, that's what I read in the in the documentation. What would be the on housing, generally speaking? Well, by increasing the tax base, it helps defray costs of running the city um, across the the entire city. So, um, obviously. Uh, building a new dealership. Right now it's co-located with their four dealerships. So um, it's giving more space, allowing them to um, expand the number of products that they offer in the community. Obviously um, jobs will be tied to that. So more professional jobs coming into the community, um, re another retail option for folks coming in and a reason for folks in the region to come in and purchase a vehicle from them. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, obviously, yes, there is always an indirect impact. Obviously, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. It's just that the language that has been used in the documentation almost hinted, if I was going to, if, if a resident reads it, it almost sounds like that it, there is something with housing within the plans or the, within the project. There is a hint there. I, I don't know. I don't think I'm the only one interpreting it like that, but it's just a detail. No, um, and that might just come from the from the actual development agreement. That's because we're using the same standard language in all the development agreements, so yeah. that you have that consistency. Yeah. yeah. So we don't call it out. So it's not housing related. So we don't call it out directly. Yeah. Um, but Could that's be. so that council has the same document, and we just kind of talk about what's changed from the yeah. standard, and not much is different with this one other than project type. That makes sense. It could very well be. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Any other questions or comments? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve on this one. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Thank you. Did mean to bring item 17 into that right away, but it's okay. We'll get to file that one shortly. For now, we are on to item number 14. 14, which is resolution number 14 of 2425, a resolution authorizing appropriate city officials to execute an engagement letter with Quarles and Brady LLP to serve as bond counsel and disclosure counsel for the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Uh, the, this item and I believe it's the next item are both related to one another. Uh, we are bringing forward our request to uh, get authorization from council to issue our annual debt. Uh, this first resolution, uh, with, which is the engagement letter with Quarles and Brady, that allows us to go through a disclosure and bond council process. They make sure that we're completely compliant in all of the disclosures that we have to provide for issuing debt. So it gives uh, myself especially a uh, good night's sleep after issuing the debt, knowing that we're doing everything we need to do. Any questions or comments on this one, Elder Perella? Yeah, I have a comment because I have a question right here, and now you answered it already, which was uh, if, if that council was applying to, so if that council is the third party that looks at our conditions right now before uh, to work on the promise. I wasn't sure that that was the case, but obviously it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? If not, we'll be looking for a motion to approve on this one. I oh. move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Takes us to item 15, the second leg of this one, uh, resolution number 15 of 2425, resolution authorizing the issuance and establishing parameters for the sale of not to exceed $23,165,000 of general obligation promissory notes, uh, series 2024A. Thank you. Uh, the resolution does offer quite a bit of information regarding this debt issuance. Uh, the bulk of the 
capital projects that are annual through our capital improvements program remain the same. I will say that there have been some changes, especially regarding the ta uh, tax increment district 21 and 23 projects, because now that those have become um, open and our projects are moving forward quite quickly, that's why some um, debt requests have been brought forward. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I will also let you know that Phil Kassin from Ehlers, who is our financial advisor and who helps us issue this debt, will be at council next Monday to answer any questions as well. Any discussion from the committee? I, Elder Burrell? I just want to make sure, I'm sorry because I, I, I said that before, but I want to make sure that in addition to Edlers, then the bond council is the one which will look at the promise, promissory notes, or better, our conditions to issue promissory notes. That is correct. Okay, very good, thank you again. Any other questions or comments? If not, I don't have anything to add myself at this time. So we would be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Takes us to item 16, which is RC number 262 of 2324. Uh, submitting a claim from Albert J. Istvanek for alleged injuries to his dog at the Dog Run Park on 18th Street. This is here in front of you for filing. It's a claim that's been denied. Any questions or comments? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to file. Move to file. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. That brings us to item 17, which was a direct referral of RO number 10 of 2425. Uh, submitting a communication from City Administrator Casey Bradley to Mayor Ryan Sorensen and the Common Council members, providing background information on the proposed development agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Van Horn Properties of Sheboygan LLC. Won't make Casey come back up here since I forgot to combine that with item 13 when we were on it. <laughs> but I guess, is there any discussion on this? If not, we would be looking for a motion to file the memo. Move to file. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. That one is filed. Next up is item 18, which was a direct referral of resolution number 16 of 2425, authorizing the Harbor Center Marina manager to offer convenience store type goods for sale and establishing a framework for such sales. Good evening. So the intent here would be for ICE, for a big uh, fishing community, a lot of charters that uh, Sheboygan supports. So that would be the main intent. There was an idea to float around as far as maybe a vending machine or two. We do take a lot of transients from other cities, people coming in to visit. And when they walk through the doors, uh, it would be, you know, ostentatious for us or for them to, you know, be able to have a, a bottle of water or so. But I will say that there was no intention in you know, us trying to go out and fill up the ship store. I know that that's not something that the marina would like to do, at least at this time, but it was strictly for maybe a vending machine or two and ice. Thank you. Any questions or comments from committee? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. So, all right, we have a motion and a second then, seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. And the motion passes. <clears throat> Last but not least, that brings us to item number 19, which was a direct referral of resolution number 17 of 2425, authorizing entering into an amendment and restated development agreement and grant agreement with Partners for Community Development Incorporated and Gateway Apartments LLC regarding an affordable housing project to be located on the corner of North 13th Street and Erie Avenue. Good evening again.
So this um, is an agreement that this body has seen before. They have changed the, the legal entities for the agreement and have asked for an extension of the timeline to get the project done. The um, project includes WIDA tax credits, and so it, there's been a delay there to, to meet the original timeline. So I believe we backed it up three months? I think it's three months. Questions? No, nope, but the incentives haven't changed. None of that has changed. Questions or comments? I believe that is a 44 unit. Excuse me, repeat? I believe 44. I was going to see if it, yes, 44 units. Alder Decker. So um, when is the groundbreaking for this one then going to be? Is there, what, did they have a time frame exactly or is it? Uh, so they're hoping to break ground, I believe, at the end of July. Okay. By, by August 1st, the end of 1st. July. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to approve on this. Second. second. All right. We have a motion and a second then, seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. That item is approved. Our next regular meeting date appears yet to be determined. And with that, we have exhausted our agenda and are looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. We are adjourned. <coughs> Thank you, everybody.